Myanmar, over 51 million people. Aung San Suu Kyi's party won elections here in 2015, but the army still wields great power. Aung San Suu Kyi unfortunately has no practical ability to rein in the security forces. Since independence from the British in 1948, its many ethnic minorities have been engaged in almost continuous civil war. It's a majority Buddhist country, but one minority is the Rohingya, who are Muslim and have sustained long-standing persecution. The majority of Rohingya live in Rakhine State, many in and around Mando. In October 2016, the army began a siege of the city. There were reports of mass killings, rape, and of tens of thousands of Rohingya seeking refuge in neighboring Bangladesh. The Myanmar government says these reports are exaggerated. So Al Jazeera Arabic correspondent Salam Hindawi traveled to Myanmar, also known as Burma, to investigate for herself. The conflict between Myanmar's ethnic minorities and the ruling Burmese majority that controls the army is one of the world's longest ongoing civil wars. The United Nations and other agencies have reported regularly on widespread human rights violations. <laughs> Salam arrived in Yangon, the country's largest city, to find a large demonstration in progress. The military government was dissolved in 2011. Aung San Suu Kyi's party then won a majority in both houses of parliament in the 2015 elections, but has not yet succeeded in addressing the country's long-standing ethnic conflicts. This is the time that, you know, that uh, we got a government, that the, uh, we got a people's government that we all, that we all want. So uh, we all believe that this time we don't have to fight each other. We, we have to, to have a dialogue to, you know, uh, to have, you know, uh, to, to build a better country. So this is the time that, you know, time to, that we, all the people are standing up together to, you know, for, for peace. But there didn't seem to be any sign of the Rohingya at this demonstration. So Salam asked protesters about the problems suffered by the Rohingya. So what did you think about the Rohingya now in Arakan, Rakhine? No, we are mainly saying about the civil war happened in Kachin State. I'm, I have no idea to say about it. There are over a million Rohingya in Myanmar. They say they've lived in what's now Rakhine State for generations. But the Myanmar government continues to maintain that they're illegal immigrants who came to what was then Arakan after independence. Salam asked a Rohingya rights activist about their disputed origins and uncertain citizenship status. Burma got independent in 1948. And then we are accepted citizens of this country. Every Rohingya, we had the voting rights. We, our people, many people, uh, we had the right of the running election. We have uh, every right that time. لماذا إذا غيرت الحكومة موقفها من الروهينجا؟ After that military coup in 1962, and they gradually changing their behavior to our people. After that, they introduced 1982 citizenship law just aiming to bar Rohingya people from the citizenship. As the government and the authorities always saying, Rohingya are not uh, from this country, they are not a citizen, they are illegal immigrants from the Bangladesh, which is as why I strongly, categorically deny, we are not Bangladeshi. We are not the people who can migrate from Bangladesh from any time. We are the part of the, this land from centuries, even uh, from before the British rule. 
هل ترى بأن المنظمات الدولية تقوم بواجبها فعلا لحماية الروهينجا؟ This very very relevant question because UN already issued many kind of statement. United Nations, United States also issued their statement, resolutions, and then OIC and then EU. Everyone talking about the Rohingya people to stop the abuse, but situation every time goes worse. My question is why? Myanmar has been tightly controlled for decades and journalists have been banned from much of Rakhine state for some time. But Abdel Rashid gave Salam some amateur video from Mando. There were burning houses and Rohingya appearing to flee. But some images of human remains were too disturbing to show. Al Jazeera needed to find out more about what happened in Mando. Salam went to the capital of Rakhine State, Sitwe. Rohingya were allegedly forced from their homes there and put into camps. From Sitwe, she planned to continue on to Mando. But soon after her plane took off, there was some unfortunate news. A prominent lawyer, Kony, had been murdered at Yangon Airport. He'd been Aung San Suu Kyi's legal advisor for several years. He was also a Muslim, a member of Suu Kyi's ruling National League for Democracy Party, and helped create the office of state councillor that enabled her to become the effective head of the government in 2016. Sitwe was at the center of serious violence in 2012. Hundreds of Rohingya were killed and tens of thousands forced to leave their homes in the city and move to nearby camps. Today, it's difficult to find any Rohingya on the streets. There's no call to prayer and it's forbidden even to enter any of the mosques. Salam wanted to enter one of the camps near Sitwe, but it was heavily guarded by the army. reporting to the officer. Just wait a minute. The camp is not only heavily guarded, but strongly fortified by barbed wire fencing. It looks much more like a prison than a camp. The Rohingya live in huts here. They say they fled their homes after being persecuted by the ethnic Burmese. They allege that Buddhist monks were among their attackers. Now they rely heavily on non-governmental organizations, 
and are restricted in their movement, their ability to marry, in their educational opportunities, and their access to health care. Salam met the camp's so-called doctor, but it turned out he had no medical training or qualifications. Salam was upset by what she saw and heard at the camp. Many Rohingya seem to have been there for years, and these children appeared never to have lived anywhere else. Muhammad took Salam to visit a woman suffering from joint pain, but he warned her that they were both probably under constant surveillance. دكتور شو شو عملت لها شو شو كيف كيف ممكن انك تتعامل مع حالتها عادة بجري ماني عادي زين عادي بجري ماني زين بيا رامر إذا بيا هون عرا إيرنا في إذا بيا هني موت ما قاعد يبرد موت ما قاعد ماني قيرا قيرا هون عرا غا هون عرا غا زور لو سوي نظره ما ولا إني إني عادي بيا رامو إذا غورا غورا سام ماش عشتم أي بصر أوربي بيا رامين خالي شيء كمل ماضي كأنه لا عرا تيجي كم دتنا ي ي ي ي نافع ده كله كم كم ده كي نافع that, 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 that,
Buddhism is the most popular religion in Myanmar. Some have accused right-wing monks of being prejudiced against Muslims, particularly the Rohingya. Salam went to visit a monk to ask him about the situation. بالظروف القاسية والمزرية والحصار الذي يفرض على الروهينجا في ولاية رخين. ظروف تناهاري ودوازة يعني إنه ظروف مدادية لثاري تناجح كل نادية لثاري. دوزه أي مفيد نيجا نيرا نعمان نعمان نير نير كما ظروف ดูคุยในเมื่อกี้เว้นเนี่ยนั่งเงาอุริเนี่ยนี่เนี่ยมุมาชีดูนั่งเงาอุริเนี่ยคุณดูอ่ะอย่างนี้เราจี้อะไร
Bangladesh mah pura zagaan eh, cenderu di mah Rohingya ni pura zagaan eh, matu. Cenderu a Bangladesh nuele mau. Cenderu a jika time pin eh, lema pau pabi lo, cibin lara new zagaan itu ni le lude. Myanmar's 1982 citizenship laws did not recognize the Rohingya, and this has precluded them from gaining equal rights. But the government has since issued what are called white cards. At the time, this was viewed as a commitment to grant the Rohingya status that would enable them to apply for citizenship. Zozo showed Salam these white ID cards. Yai itu dia nama Abu Ka White Ka. Dika Ka, Dika Ka. Nampak ni sekurang ni. Jangan lupa zaman yang ni parti jom demokrasi atau itu juga kau buat. Cinta macam cinta, seana tengkar eh, setakat ni juga. Jangan lupa dia Rohingya Muslim ni tu, nampak sekurang ni mah, topi reka ni. Adi cina dulu jago dah ular eh, dika ni alam tu topi, topi ni tu nampak tak sama. Cenderu na dikan eh meju ke, cua le cangkai biru, cua le aner di biru, cua le jangkai badi biru. Apa ini? Na tahun eh sengah naupai mah, na tahun seni pada na pih biru dikan ka tayar mui na busu biru, turu ka cahaya le asuya ka. Adi roga, pira le asuya ka, tayar mui lu pira le asuya ka suro. What Zozo was referring to was a government move in 2015 in which it asked the Rohingya to hand in their white cards in return for new papers categorizing them as Bengali. Coming up in part two, the Rohingya women who fled to Bangladesh with harrowing stories of their alleged treatment by the army in Rakhine State. <laughs> Myanmar, also known as Burma, has about a million Rohingya. They're Muslims and say they've lived in what's now known as Rakhine State for generations. But official and public discrimination led to widespread violence in 2012, and tens of thousands of Rohingya now live in refugee camps. 70,000 had fled to Bangladesh by early 2017, and the UN has accused security forces of serious human rights abuses, including gang rape, murder, and torture. Al Jazeera Arabic correspondent Salam Hindawi is in Myanmar, investigating how the Rohingya are treated. You learn Arabic? Yeah, Arabic. Okay. Arabic? Yeah, Qaf. 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 Lam. Mi. Nu. Wu. Ha. And the Yamaru. Yamaru. Salaam. 
Salam and her film crew's every move was closely observed by police officers. Still wary of the police, a Rohingya man showed Salam a video clip from an isolated area of Mando in Rakhine State. What happened? Uh, I said military and police shooting Myanmar government. A number of police were killed by an armed group in Rakhine State in October 2016. This was what sparked the series of alleged attacks against the Rohingya by the army. A special government committee was set up to investigate the violence but it found no evidence to support the allegations of atrocities against the Rohingya, despite these powerful images. Salam was given more video by humanitarian organizations. The images were again graphic, appearing to show violence, arson, murder, and torture. Some of the images were simply too horrific to be shown on television. Salam had planned to travel on from Sitwe to Mando, deeper into Rakhine State, but the police refused to allow it. Myanmar can often be a very difficult place for journalists to operate. Instead, Salam met a member of the Rakhine National Party, who had served on the government committee that investigated the alleged violence against the Rohingya in October 2016. <laughs> ဒီချာဘင်းဒီဘင်္ဂလိဒီရဲ့နေထိုင်ပဲအဲရီယာတစ်ခုဖြစ်သူတို့ကလို့ခြင်းနဲ့အဲ့ဒါကြောင့်
Salam asked why there seemed such strength of feeling against the Rohingya. In February 2017, the UN reported a raft of human rights violations after interviewing over 200 Rohingya. In March, it announced a fact-finding mission to Myanmar. But in June, the Myanmar government said it would deny entry to officials taking part in the UN investigation. All the while, Myanmar receives assistance from India, Israel, Russia, and the United States, which lifted sanctions against it in 2016. Salam met a former director of Human Rights Watch in Myanmar, now an independent observer. The military is still the major institution in this country. The Myanmar military still has extraordinary powers guaranteed by the 2008 constitution. 25% of the seats in, um, in the parliament, three key ministries um, that, that really controls uh, a lot of the country. M massive troops all throughout the country. Um, they run huge parts of the economy. Um, they don't just get one of the, the biggest shares of the national budget. Um, they also have extensive business interests throughout the country. Salam asked what the situation was like in Mando. There is no doubt that there is a new phase um, in the conflict in Mongdor with the appearance of this militants group that has staged violent attacks against the security forces and has killed um, a number of, of security personnel. Um, however, uh, the, the threat posed by this new, new group um, is, is disproportionate to the scale of, of the security forces' responses. What about the role of Aung San Suu Kyi? Aung San Suu Kyi doesn't have a role in this. Um, she hasn't done anything. And when she is effectively the leader of the country and she stays relatively silent um, about the abuses going on um, and does not make a public call for the security forces to rein in their behaviour um, and call for accountability for any violations that have taken place, um, then she's been in dereliction of her duties as, as a, a duly elected um, leader of the country. Um, so she's really been absent when her voice as a leader needs to be heard. Quite simply, I think the military um, and the government are blocking people from going into northern Mongol because they have something really horrible to hide. I think there are all indications through satellite imagery and through the government's own admissions and through um, credible reporting coming out of the area um, that there has been extensive human rights violations and they want to hide the extent of the, the, of the abuses against the civilian population. That's a cover-up. Salam decided to make one more bid to try and get to Mando, shaking off her minder and arriving at the ferry terminal at dawn. سأحاول الحصول على تذاكر لركوب العبارة بطريقة رسمية. هذه العبارة سوف تتوجه إلى بوديدونغ ومنها سوف نواصل الرحلة عن طريق البر إلى ماندو. لكن الحصول على التذاكر ليس سهلا، فالشرطة هي من تشرف على بيع هذه التذاكر.
permission. Why I need permission? The police stopped Salam before she even got close to the ferry. I need permission? Oh, per paper, paper. Oh, okay, paper, okay. No paper, no trip to Mando. The alternative was Bangladesh. In late 2016, early 2017, tens of thousands of Rohingya fled there to escape the violence in Rakhine State. Again, Salam could not gain access, but British members of her film crew were allowed to travel. They would broadly follow the same route as the Rohingya, across the Naf River, which separates the two countries, a hazardous journey for the Rohingya on foot. Bangladesh estimates that there are now between 200,000 and 500,000 unregistered Rohingya there. This has prompted them to set up security posts and checkpoints along the border with Myanmar. Once inside the country, the crew had to pass through further Bangladeshi checkpoints, where they posed as tourists and used hidden cameras. very difficult to go in, but we try it ourselves. Huh? Yeah, you can see the people. There were Rohingya by the side of the road. In order to continue filming, the crew took a side road to avoid attracting the attention of the Bangladeshi police. upon one of the many unofficial Rohingya refugee camps in Bangladesh. The refugees live in the most primitive conditions, in locations rarely seen by the international media. Even by the standards of refugee camps, this is a miserable existence. The crew spoke to a group of Rohingya women who had recently arrived from Mando. Bangladesh <laughs> 
आरा तब बेगिंग कुरा माल जो बिरयानी ले सब है मांसे ताने वाली आरा बानी जी रे सार मांसे की गट्टा जामा माये ना इस बार आसना ना ही आनो होने वाली क्या गट्टे मारा ही निला दुकाता हालत ही रिया ये तीन तुम आती है इन्हें लोग गर्म मत तो कैसे नहीं रहेना अगरी माइचे वो माइच मानुष आते हैं तुम आती है बेशक अच्छी मानुष आये अच्छे तो ये रहे फोश होते नहीं फोश फोश ट्वेंटी फाइव डी ये कल कौन हारे तो वाले ये रहे माइचर हाँ समाधि तक कि ये रहे तो के ये रहे वाला माइचर वा the women all tell similar stories of their treatment in Myanmar. ज़ोरादी <laughs> आशा करो तो आज हमारे जिंदा आसे जिंदा करेंगे। अह ना ना जा। जुलूम में जाना कोई चले? तो आप ऐसे आंधे रहो अरनू आए। आज दुआई हैं तो दिन तो गुली बुआ तक के तो तार वो दिन आप बराए यार। ठान ठानी ले रहा हमारा बिग्गी बिड़ान बैज गुरी बोल जाम हैं तू जना जना सब बाद में नॉट ठानी ले रहा तारा डिक्का नहीं जाकर डिक्का नहीं जाए रहा तारा मानी जुलूम हाथा गरम बोले गज्जा है द्रोम माये वार उड़ी नवार दे आई हुआ तो हमारा डिक्की वो माँ बाप हाथ से तो आप फलाना जगह नहीं तीन मैं उन बारी बुता बुता ऐसी लो उन बाजार दाते बुता दाते ऐसी रा तो तरफ दिन गाड़ी बोल ना पुरा बाई शिन ना पुरा बात तो आई अब बन नॉन है आई उन जाते सब फारा गियो Myanmar contains many different ethnic minorities, but the Rohingya seem to suffer some of the most severe discrimination. In 2017, the UN went as far as suggesting that Myanmar's strategy may be to expel them completely. In her policy towards them, State Councillor Aung San Suu Kyi seems to have changed from champion of democracy to hard-edged politician. As long as the prying eyes of the outside world are kept away from Rakhine State and the reality hidden from humanitarian organizations and the international media, it's hard to see the decades-long mistreatment of this persecuted minority changing anytime soon.